Would you open your Bibles to the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles? I want to continue a theme begun last Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, chapter 2, verse 1. Somebody just holler, holler, do you? When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the bl blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came in to rest on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there was staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't these who are speaking Galileans? How then it is that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? As you take your seat, touch somebody and tell them, I know I've been changed. I know I have been changed. I want to put the second installment on this series of sermons on Pentecost. And this one is entitled, I know I have been changed. Jesus advised his disciples that something marvelous yet mysterious would be happening to them. They did not fully comprehend his words when he said it to them, but he gave them an indication. He said, John baptized you with water, but I am going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Something marvelous is going to happen to you. I am not just going to change things around you. I'm not going to just make the outer space of your life better. But I'm going to make your first and most normal home better. I'm going to make you better. I'm going to step into your life in a new, awesome, mighty, miraculous way and you will be changed. They had no concept what that change would be. They could not fathom what it could be. They had seen him and they saw the effects of his workings in the lives of others. But being able to fully embrace what this change would be was beyond them. But they did what he said. They at least were obedient. They went back to Jerusalem and they waited until God started moving. I, I need you just to lean over to somebody and just ask them, have you learned how to wait? Oh, you didn't say it like you really meant it. Look at them and say, I mean, really wait. Have you learned to be patient while God is working something out? Have you learned to trust that it will come? Have you learned to lean and rely on God? Have you really accepted as principle in your life, they that wait upon the Lord? Oh God, I wish I had a witness. Shall, shall, shall renew their strength. They shall, shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. Have you really learned how to wait or do you still live in your doubts? Well, it gets quiet now. 
he told them, go back to Jerusalem. And on that day, Uncle Joe, they did what he said. They went back to Jerusalem. And when the day of Pentecost arrived, the 120 people that were in that room, when that morning of the day of Pentecost came, or at least some part in the 24-hour span of Pentecost, God moved in a mighty way. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but there are some people in this room who can remember when God moved in your life. In the Bible, Pentecost is a day. It happens on a particular day. But for those of us who live in this land and time, Pentecost is a season. There is a season when God is moving in your life. There is a season when God opens your eyes. There is a season when God talks to you at a deeper level. God, I wish I had a witness. There is a season when, in the, as the old folk used to say, God shakes your dungeons and your chains fall off. There's a season when your eyes begin to open. There's a season when your mind begins to clear up. And just so I'm preaching to the right crowd, is there anybody here who's experienced a season when God moved in your life in a new way? It might not have been on the 50th day after Easter, but something happened in your life. In fact, the only reason you're sitting up in here right now is because something happened in your life. God, I feel like preaching this. Something happened on that day of Pentecost. The Bible says that they were in the room and they heard an awesome sound clap like a gale force wind. It was not a wind, it was a sound. And when they looked up, they saw something that looked like fire. And that fire split itself up and began to descend over each one of them and began to descend into each one of them. Why? Because Jesus said to them, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it's coming in fire. I need you to look at somebody and tell them, God's sending fire your way. He's sending fire to purify, to clean up some stuff that ain't right. Uh-oh, it's going to get real quiet now. See, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, fire comes in your life to burn up some things, to burn up some of those doubts, to burn up some of those fears, to burn up some of those insecurities. God, if you understand what I'm talking about, you'll start to feel better because you may not realize that one of the things that's holding you back are your in, or some of the things that are holding your, you back are your insecurities, your feelings of inadequacy, your sense of incompetence, your not willingness to see yourself in high regard. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he begins to burn all of that up inside of you. He begins to rid you of your insecurities and rid you of your fears and make you willing to believe that some things that you did not think were possible are now possible. I'm talking to some folk in church right now who know the Holy Spirit took some stuff and burned it up because what God had for you could not get to you as long as that stuff was living inside of you. Why do you think I've called you together on Tuesday night for prayer? There's some things God wants to get to you, but they can't get to you till God gets inside of you. And before he gets inside of you, he's got to get some stuff out of you. Slap five with the person beside you and tell him, you know you're, he's talking to you. You've got to get rid of some stuff that has to burn up. It has to be destroyed by fire. It has to be melted down and washed away because the fire is purifying and cleansing. They were filled with fire. These were men who 50 days early and people 120, 50 days earlier were scared to name the name of Jesus. They were scared to talk about God. They were hiding out in an upper room. But as soon as this happens, they come busting out, preaching and teaching. Where's their fear? Where is their anxiety? What happened to their sense of inadequacy? 
What happened to their sense of I'm not and I have shortcomings? What happened to the sense that we're from the ghetto, we're from the hood, we don't have the right pedigree, we don't have the back, right background? What, what, what happened to their sense of I didn't graduate from the right school, I, I don't have a degree, I don't, I don't have this, I don't have that? What happened to their sense of I don't have enough money to buy this, I don't have enough money to get this? What happened to all of that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and starts burning this stuff up? and starts planting the garden of God's possibilities in you. Stuff starts growing faster than you ever realize. And all of a sudden, you start believing what yesterday you couldn't even fathom. You start dreaming what yesterday you thought was an impossibility. In fact, if you don't get what I'm talking about yet, just look at your own life. Look at where you started from. I need to talk to some folk who didn't always have it like you you have it now. I need to talk to some ghetto before you were bougetto. I need to talk to some folk who were down before you were up. Come on, somebody in here. Remember how God took all of the inadequacy out of you. God, if you under, if you get this slap five with somebody and tell them I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I got big lips. I got a fat nose. I got broad hips. I got knotty hair. I got big toes. I got pushy feet. I got cankles instead of ankles. I got buck teeth. I got ugly skin. I got this, but I am a child of God, and God has possibilities for me. I need you to look at somebody and tell them, don't you think you don't have possibilities? Oh my God, one of the greatest tricks of the adversary is to make you think you don't have possibilities. You were born with possibilities. You were born to do the impossible. And if you actually look at what God is doing in your life, you are already succeeding at the impossible. How dare you think possibilities are not yours when you are a living example of the impossible. I need an impossible praise. I, I need an impossible shout. I need an impossible hallelujah. I need an impossible thank you, Jesus. My God. My God, the fire comes. They come marching out. And the one thing they know is, I've been changed. God, I feel like shouting on that myself. I've been changed. In fact, look at somebody with a smirky smile and tell them, I've been changed. I've been changed. Don't fool yourself, brothers. Don't fool yourself, sisters, on this men's day. There are some persons in here who can attest to the fact they've been changed. Oh, God, we may have a breakout shout in here. I need some folk who know you ain't always been like you are now. Can I come to announce it now that you ain't always been? And you are hallelujah happy and thank you, Jesus, glad that God's spirit lives in you. You may not be everything you ought to be, but hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You are not what you used to be. And if there's one thing you are sure of, God, oh, as God searched you out, God is searching out some other folk. Every now and then you ought to just laugh because some of the folk that are laughing at God going to wind up shouting because of God. My God, he's moving, church. He's moving. And not only is he moving in us, but he's seeking folk to move in. <laughs> when I look at all the crime and murders in our city, I know the city, the spirit is seeking to move. Y'all miss that. When I look at the ineptness of government, I know the spirit is seeking to move. When I look at all the bad decisioning done by people of all ages, I know 
The spirit is seeking to move. This is not a, when leadership is not guided by the spirit, the evil it presents and perpetrates flows down and goes to the masses of people. When the wicked rule, the righteous suffer. Somebody better quote the Bible up in here. When the wicked rule, the righteous suffer. Lean over to somebody and tell them, I know that's right. I know the spirit is trying to move now. I know this is a Pentecost season because God is getting ready to do some mighty and amazing things in our midst. Oh, I wish I had somebody on my street. I wish I had somebody who wakes up in the morning sensing that God is up to something, who drives their car sensing that God is going to move in a mighty way. You ever just look at folk and say, uh-huh, it's coming, it's coming. God's going to move in a special way. It can't get much worse than this, God. It can't get much worse than this. God's going to move, and I want to get my chair and get a front row seat because I got a feeling God's up to something. He's just getting all the ducks in order, but a change is getting ready to come, and how do Oh, I know it because change no change. Change, if game no game, then change no change. Do I have company in here? Is there anybody in here who knows God changed your life in a mighty, miraculous, and an amazing way and took some stuff out of you? And as David said, cast it in the sea of forgetfulness that it might not shame you down here nor condemn you at the yonder's judgment bar. Somebody ought to bless his name. I've been. My God, the text says they were all filled. <laughs> Not half of them. I had a revelation, Trisha, the other week. I not only have to pray for me, but I need to pray for the person beside me. Why? I need both of us filled. Because I need a fellow soldier and not a new enemy. Look at somebody and say, I need a fellow soldier. That's why I pray for great people who don't know how to act and people who talk out the side of their neck. Because I don't need new enemies, but I sure need somebody helping me to fight darkness and helping me to come against evil and helping me to battle the imps of hell. I wish I had somebody here who could pray for folk you don't like and pray for folk who get on your last nerve and pray for folk who disturb your spirit. Why? Because you and I need more soldiers in the army of the law. Everybody was filled. Elijah, they didn't leave anybody. Everybody in this room is filled with the Holy Spirit. All of their insecurities start burning up at one time. People move from what we can't do to what we can. Can you imagine the Holy Spirit falling in your house? And the conversation moving from what we can't do. And the one person said, well, I just always have to just, I know you don't want to hear what I got to say, but somebody got to say it. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like folk who come up to me and say, I know I shouldn't say this, but I said, then don't say it. <laughs> and the other crowd that say, this is none of my business, but you're right, it's none of your business. No, 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 no. Can you imagine what it would be like if everybody in your house saw the same possibilities you saw? Whoa! Look at somebody just say, imagine your children coming to you with it. Lord, it's got so quiet. 
Oh, I'm in everybody's house that day. Oh, I'm sitting at your coffee table with a cup of tea, saying, can you imagine if you could stop talking about what can't happen? Because the voices that plant can't in your head are gone. And the power to make can lives inside of you. Do I have anybody who know can lives inside of you? Come on, don't play, don't play. Don't play, it's getting hot in here. Do I have anybody who knows can lives inside of you? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can find a way to solve this problem. I can move mountains out of my way. I can make crooked ways straight. I can make rough places plain. God, if you understand that, every now and then you get happy just riding with God, thanking him for the power of the person of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you, that has helped you have a funeral. Listen, they had a funeral for the N word. They need to have a funeral for the can't word. Can I have anybody in here who can declare I can and I will? Come on, don't play, don't play. Declare it, I can and I will. Some of y'all ought to jump down and just shut your mouth because you know you ain't gonna even try. But I need some sold out, born again believers who know the Holy Spirit is in you. Look at somebody beside you and tell them I can and I will. I can and I will because greater is he that is in me than in he that is in the world. I can and I will. I, I will proves I can. Y'all missed that. I will proves I can. A lot of saints walk around, I can do all things to Christ who can me. I ain't doing nothing. Ain't doing the Sometimes you ought to say to folk, I haven't lived up to that scripture yet. Or you ought to say to it, this is the new scripture I'm working on. I can do all things through Christ. And then back it up with, I will. I made the statement, now I'm going to live the action. I declared it, now I'm going to bring it to pass. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives in me. The Holy Spirit burned up all the stuff that can't use to stop me. The Holy Spirit burned up my laziness. The Holy Spirit burned up my excuses. The Holy Spirit burned up my fears. The Holy Spirit burned up my remembrances of yesterday. The Holy Spirit burned up what I think about myself. The Holy Spirit burned up what people used to call me and say about me and make me feel like I was less than somebody. And so I will, I will stand, I will accomplish, I will do all things through Christ. I will get it done because the power of God is at work in me. And if God be for me, slap five with somebody and tell them you sitting beside somebody with the Holy Ghost. God, if you, I need somebody to celebrate that Holy Ghost in you. If the Holy Ghost wasn't in you, you'd be defeated. You'd have stayed defeated. We'd have had your funeral by now. Let me move quick. He says, he's, I'm, I, they say, I, we've been, I've been changed. I now talk about what I can do. They jump up, they come out the door. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, the Bible says when they come out, they start talking in other tongues and people start hearing what they're saying in their own language. And, and one of the things, and you know, we, we get caught up on the fact that they're speaking in other tongues. This, uh, this is not the aesthetic term, tongues that Paul talks about in Corinthians when he says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am sounding brass and a tingling cymbal. That's not that. They are speaking foreign languages. 
They are speaking foreign languages. The Parthians understand what they're saying. The Medes understand what they're saying. The Romans understand what they're saying. And what blows their mind is that they can all understand their own language. These people who do not know their language are speaking their language. Now, for most of us, we get caught up on what's the Greek word there, the glossolalia, the speaking in tongues. But the reality of this is something deeper. It says that when the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, look at somebody and say, get this, there will be obvious evidence of your change. Y'all miss that. They are speaking in a language, Maya, that everybody hears in their own tongue. We get hung up on the language. We get hung up on the what it is they are doing. But God wants you to realize that when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, no, you may not go out and speak French and Spanish. You may not go out and speak Portuguese. But what will happen is there is an obvious, there will be obvious evidence of the change in your life. And what will that obvious evidence be? You will be able to communicate with new power with people you did not know, with people you could not talk to before, but you will have the ability to talk to folk and to draw folk to you. God, y'all miss what I'm talking about. You will be able to communicate with anybody. When the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, one of the things God does for you is give you the ability to communicate with anybody. And one of the ways you know it's the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost will stop you from judging people. Nudge somebody say, I need that. See, the reason some of us cannot communicate with folk is we are so busy judging them. But when God puts the Holy Spirit in you, judging them is not your purpose. Judging them is not what you're after. You want them to understand what you're talking about. God, I wish I had a witness. They began to understand you in a new language. Can I preach like I want? I'm not going to be much longer. There's a book out called Preaching in the Age of Trump by old Wesley Allen. And old Wesley Allen has a great line that every preacher has to hear. Old Wesley Allen says this. He says, the aim of preaching, he says, the aim of preaching, of gospel preaching, is not to preach a good sermon. That kills every preacher everywhere. And that, that wears out all of us from seminar. They said the aim of a good sermon, of a preaching, is not to preach a good sermon. He says the aim of gospel preaching is to make sure that the gospel is first heard. Wait a minute. Then believed. Wait a minute. Then lived. He said you ain't preached if they just shout. You ain't preached if you just warn them out. Because that's not the aim of preaching. The aim of preaching is to make sure the gospel is heard, that Jesus Christ saves. That is believed that he saves me. And that is lived. I want to walk with him each and every day. And when God has filled you with the Holy Ghost, you ain't out to try to whip folk for their sins because God gave you grace for your sins. You're not out trying to tear everybody else down, shaking your bony finger in somebody, trying to criticize them when the devil is whispering in your ear, giving you words to say. Somebody better hear me up in here, but look at somebody and tell them when the Holy Ghost got you, you can talk to anybody. That's how come I know. And when the Holy Ghost has you, you talk in such a way as to try to draw people to you. Can I preach this thing? That's why I know the Holy Ghost is not guiding our government. 
Because our government is not seeking to bring people together. It's seeking to divide them, to make them go to war one against another. Somebody better hear me. But when the Holy Ghost is working on you, you can talk to folk you never thought you'd talk to. You can talk to people who never thought you'd listen to them. Your children will listen to you. Why? Because you can talk their language. You, your friends will listen to you. Why? Because you can talk in such a way that there's something about your tone, something about the timbre in your voice, something about the words you say that all of a sudden they hear you in a different way. Slap five with somebody and tell them I've been changed. And the beauty of it is when you really been changed, God will send folk to you. People will come running to hear the language you are speaking. When God is at work in your life, you don't have to worry about Instagram and Facebook. God will raise up somebody to hear your words. Look at somebody and say, a new conversation. Don't get hung up on the fact they were speaking different languages. Get caught up on the fact they could communicate with folk. It's a terrible thing when church folk get so hanky so self-righteous that they can't communicate with other folk. My God, I, I, I was listening to somebody talk this morning. I was hearing somebody talk about all the stuff that's wrong and what people shouldn't do, this, that, and the other. And I thought to myself, they'd have had a hard time with Jesus. Because Jesus hung out with publicans and ate with sinners and went by folk, talked to folk who had who was shacking with people. God, I need a witness in here. Some of us got so much religion, we can only talk to certain folk and only be around certain people. Well, I've got news for you. The Holy Ghost party is not with just other folk like you, but the Holy Ghost party breaks out when the Holy Ghost moves from you to folk who never met him, never been exposed to him. Can I get a witness in here? Look at somebody and tell them, I can talk to any anybody. You can make me mad and I can still laugh in your face and keep it moving, baby. Why? Because the purpose of the Holy Spirit is for me to be able to communicate. How do I know I've been changed? Because I can communicate with folk I didn't even know. Wait a minute, that's not all though. The text says, the text says they came and they were standing there listening, saying, how in the world is this happening? How are they doing all of this? They're talking in all this strange language and everybody's hearing in his own language. But then they drop this line. They're talking about the mighty acts of God. Now see, that, that, that's what blew my mind. Not only is there obvious evidence that I can communicate with people, but when the Holy Spirit is in you, Look at somebody and say, get this. Your best subject is God. Oh, can I get a witness up in here? Look at somebody and say, my best subject is God. Oh, baby, I can talk about a whole lot of stuff. Somebody asked me, say, Reverend, how come you know so much about this and so much about that? I think of an answer Jesse Jackson gave. Somebody asked him, say, how come you know this and you know that Jesse Jackson said, I have a liberal arts education. I know a little bit about everything. I have a liberal arts education. I know a little bit about everything. But the thing I know the most about, oh, the thing I know the most about, and I have a way when I can work every conversation around to the thing I know the most about. Oh, can I get a witness? I'm not, I'm not a chef, so I'm not going to be talking about cooking. I, I love basketball to watch it, but that's not my forte. I'm not going to bring it around to that. Baseball, I stopped watching when Jim Gentile and Boo Powell were playing, so I ain't bringing it to that. Football, the tickets cost too much, so I ain't talking about that. Golf, I can't even swing the club, so I ain't talking about that. But oh, there's a subject I can talk about. When I talk about the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for me, 
the mighty acts of God? Do I have anybody who can talk about the mighty acts of God in your life? How he fed you, how he clothed you, how he picked you up from the biggest disappointments and setbacks of your life? how he dusted you off, how he forgave you of the rankest, nastiest, most wretched sins in your life, and he touched your life, and uh-oh, uh-oh, I need some folk who know what wretched means, but God took you from wretched, God took you from messy, God took you from shameful, and blessed your life, and if somebody looks at you now, they can't even see what you come through and what you've been through. My best topic is not me, but my best topic is the God who lives in me. And to tell somebody, he walks with me and talks with me. Grab somebody and tell them that's my best subject. That's my best subject. I took a class in God every year of my life. I graduated from Poly in 67, but I was still taking classes in God. I graduated from University of Maryland in 71, but I was still taking classes in God. I graduated from Howard University in 76, but I was still taking classes in God. I graduated from St. Mary's in 85, but I'm still taking classes in God and yesterday he taught me something. He taught me he's a way maker. He's a heart fixer. He's a burden bearer. He's a heavy load carer. He taught me analytical geometry and he taught me how to walk straight in. He taught me French and he taught me how to talk right. He taught me how to live right. He taught me how to serve right. He taught me how to pray right. He taught me how to do right. Do I have anybody here who can say my best subject is God? And don't get on my case, because I'll go back to talking about God. I'll go back to lifting up his name. And when you lift up the name of Jesus, devils will start running. Liars will start backing up. Troublemakers will get out of your way. Grab somebody and tell them, I got to tell you my story. Look at somebody else say, I got to tell you my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Has he been a way maker? Has he been a bridge bearer? Has he been a heavy load carer? Has he been what he said he would be? Has he guided your steps? Has he tried your tears? Has he calmed your fears? My best testimony is he woke me up this morning, started me on my way. I just have one question. Do you know Jesus? Do you know him for yourself? Can you testify about Jesus? Slap five with somebody and tell them you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I feel like praising God. I feel like praising God. Can I get a praise in here? Can you praise him in the back? Can you praise him on the lows? Can you praise him on the floor? My best subject is talking about God. My best subject is saying I love the Lord. He heard my cry, pitied my every groan. Yes! Oh, yes! Yes! Oh, yes! I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation. 
nation. That my trial. That my trial. That my trial. I want everybody to stand. Through it all. Through it all. Through it all. trust grab somebody on that road tell them I've been changed baby I've been changed I've been changed somebody ought to praise God for your confidence you ought to praise God for the doors he opened I need some folk uh oh I need some folk I'm available to you. How do I know I've been changed? Them inner voices ain't as loud in my head telling me what I can't do and who I'm not. Let me show you what I mean. For those of you who really believe this, look at somebody and tell them, I ain't all that, but I am God's child. If you understood what you just said, I need you. I know I've been changed because my head space been cleared. My head space been cleared. I know I've been changed. Because I can talk to folk, I can communicate with people. And they understand me. Those disciples came out, that woman started talking. And people understood them. The mark of the Holy Spirit in your life is you are understood. And people come to you of all ages because you speak a word they understand. I know I've been changing. You know the evidence of it? My best subject to talk about is God. Oh, I can talk about a whole lot of stuff, but oh, when I get to that God topic, Lights go on all over my brain. Because there's no aspect of my life he ain't been in. Do I have a witness here? How many of you remember when life told you what couldn't happen? And God stepped in to show you all things are possible. I look around this congregation and I see families I see persons who doctors told they couldn't have children. And they rocking children. Children walking by holding their hands. I remember when persons lost good jobs. Big five digit jobs. With responsibilities. Payments they had to make. And they said, how am I going to make it? And then God open the door somewhere else. God, I wish I had a witness. God opened another door somewhere else and they walked through. I, I've been to the hospital to see people in 
wrenching pain. And they don't know if they're ever going to be able to function. And then I watch God make their door to their new life open up. And they walk in singing how I got over. Do I have anybody whose best conversation is God today? Lean over to somebody and tell them, my best talk is about God, baby. Oh, it's about God. To show someone the way. If you're in New Psalmist today, you came to worship with us. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is offering you this gift because I, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I've been saying it every week since Easter because what Jesus is promising is that the same spirit that was at work in him is now at work in you. The same spirit that was at work in him is at work in you.